Centuries later, the Western Han ruler Liu Bang would become famous for promoting football. The story goes that Liu Bang had invited his father to join him from the provinces to live in the imperial palace. But there was one thing missing for the old man. Football games were often held inside the imperial palace and games were standardized with a common set of rules. A playing area called Zhizheng, or Football City, was built especially for Qiji matches, with a length and breadth of 48 meters and six goalposts at either end. Games were frequent features at court feasts or diplomatic events, and teams could vary in size between 12 to 16 players. As with modern soccer, Han Dynasty Chu Ji forbade players to touch the ball with their hands, since the belief at the time was that the ball symbolized dignity. Although the game itself was still somewhat less than dignified overall, and still played in a highly physical manner. It wasn't a pastime for the faint-hearted. The world's first soccer casualty was also documented in China. The footballer Xiang Chu had been warned against playing because of a medical condition, but his passion for the game proved to be irresistible. After a rough match, Xiang Chu went down and failed to recover. The first known incident of a soccer player dying from football fever. The game would soon become less dangerous as the Chu Ji ball evolved. The Han Dynasty ball was an irregular two-piece leather sphere, tightly stuffed with feathers. Heavy and solid, it was hard to control and couldn't be kicked very high. This posed a limitation to improving one's football skills and techniques. The Tang Dynasty, which followed, saw the Qi Ji ball undergo radical and complex change. The Chinese discarded the feathers and crude leather skins and pioneered a new ball by inflating an animal bladder which they encased with eight pieces of leather. This produced a lighter, more spherical ball that was easier to play with. The other significant change in the Tang Dynasty period saw less aggressive body contact between Chu Ji players and more emphasis on refining kicking and ball passing techniques. One of the Song Dynasty's ball games bore a distinct resemblance to volleyball, with the difference being that it was played with feet and not hands. The ball was not permitted to touch the ground and had to be sent back and forth accurately through a relatively small opening on the central net structure. Not an easy task to accomplish. Mm -hmm. 
，就是在妇女儿童当中呢流行；另一方面呢，它引入了躺这个宫廷当中，皇帝啊、侍女啊、大臣们进行蹴鞠。那他们蹴鞠肯定不是作为一种竞赛活动。The lighter chuji football and change in the nature of the game led to the formation of the first women's chuji team in 900 A.D. Coached by a senior lady of the court, this was a team like no other. The players were the emperor's concubines, whom he generously rewarded each time they played. Although the English unquestionably coined the phrase "the beautiful game" in reference to soccer, the Chinese were probably the first to practically demonstrate that it was indeed a beautiful game. The ladies played a game that was more of a performance of dexterity, centered upon which team could pass the ball for the longest time and in the most entertaining way. It should be noted, however, that their coordination and teamwork influenced male chuji teams to follow their lead and lift their game. Remarkably, sports historians note that a single 17-year-old girl once outplayed and outscored. An entire team of soldiers. Indeed, Chinese women were active in all forms of sports up to the Tang Dynasty, but this was all to change. The destiny of women was determined by the whims of men in patriarchal Chinese society, and not all emperors found pleasure in watching the ladies of their courts playing chu ji. In the 10th century, the emperor had a personal preference for ladies with small feet, and this came to be regarded as a hallmark of female beauty for the next nine centuries. Ten-year-old girls had their feet tightly bound to prevent their growth beyond 10 centimeters. This fashionable and bizarre practice of female mutilation put an end to ladies of the royal courts being seen on football fields. And only vanished over a thousand years later, at the beginning of the 20th century. For male players, little had changed except the quality of the football. By the 11th century, craftsmen had found a way to craft the Chinese football into a near-perfect sphere. The ball's size and weight were standardized. And became identical in play. It now resembled the modern soccer ball and appeared 300 years before any similar British design, 